This is the Business Stuff Podcast. This is where I will share the lessons I've learned from advising thousands of businesses over almost 30 years. Each episode will give you practical insight to allow you to learn from other people's mistakes. I'll be pulling in experts from our team and the world of business, and together we'll make sure your business is giving you what you want. My name is Martin, and this is the Business Stuff Podcast. Hi, it's Martin from the Accelerator team. I'm here with Nick Wilson. Hi, Nick. Hello, everybody. And Martin, of course. We well, haven't seen you since the inflation episode, which went down really well. Um, so Great. we thought we'd have you back and talk about the importance of the human touch in business. It's interactive. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, that was just an example of what a lack of human touch would be like. Very uh, robotic. and. But it, yeah, no, it's a good... It's a good uh, topic I think I talk about especially at the moment there's a lot of talk isn't there about AI automation or, and, yeah, yeah which has got its way but there's certain things I think you just can't beat actually dealing with a human um, do you know what I'm just going to start with a little story right I was getting the bus the other day because my car was broke right and I mean that's horrible I did not like it. But the last time I got a bus, you sort of stood there and people were talking and you could like, yeah, we're what they were saying and there'd be some comment to make you laugh. But this, you mean in the, in the queue waiting for the bus? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But this time, there was nothing. People were either on their technology, listening to music. It was just silent. It's just... S- scrolling or listening, yeah. Yeah, it's like something's been lost. But when does that happen? So if you look at kids, kids have mint imagination. They talk and they play with each other. And then you go from like from that to this these people at the Should bus stop. Should be enough. Yeah. Can, can, and I think in the workplace, the say, you know people say there's no such thing as a silly question. The reality is there is, and people don't ask them because they know they're going to look stupid. So I think a lot of these wild children like ideas and that are just they are just drummed out of you, aren't they? <laughs> yeah. But, but speaking to other people. But you talk, you, you, you've kind of your story there, Nick. I think is an interesting angle because I think businesses are looking to use automation and AI and tech more and more for obvious reasons. But I think there's a danger that they'll lose out on that bit of crack in the queue, isn't there? Yeah, but it's not just that way I was going to go there. Is the only real conversation I had was telling the driver where to go. Now, can you remember that time we were tell in London? Tell where to go or where you wanted to go. <laughs> just, yeah. <laughs> remember that time we were in London? We got on the driverless train. Oh yes, yeah. For some people, there's, there's nobody to talk to. That's right, I. There's indeed. nobody to stop saying, uh, I've missed my stop or... No one to ask how to get there, how many stops, which yeah. way you go, yeah. So, I mean, I think, because certain businesses and certain times, I think that works. And I think people now are almost, they expect not to speak to people. Online shopping, you just, you pick the colour and the size, it comes to your door. You haven't had to go in and ask where the change there's, there's no interaction but that sounds great and that sounds like it's exactly what people want until you get sent some banana shampoo instead of real bananas the first thing you want to do then is speak to a person to get it resolved because you hate the chatbot and the automated like return method it's like, it's like what, you go what on amazon and want, there isn't a yeah. return for well you sent me something but it was the wrong something yeah yeah so you can't you can't lose that human touch it's still needed even in the most um, easy to replace things because it, it you know I, I remember zero so we're big fans of zero we love zero Robson Nadler it's cloud software that helps you do your accounts and host of other things but they publicized at one of their events in 2017 and I can't remember where the data was from but it was how likely is your job to be computerized and dentists had less than a half a percent chance of their job being computerized on the other side, paralegals, accountants, and tax preparers, and data entry were all in the high 90s, mid to high 90s. Um, so they, they, they were kind of saying quite openly, we think you need to adapt. Mm-hmm. In, in, if you're a business that's in an information heavy business, you, you're the easiest ones to replace. If all you're doing is feeding information back, Google's got half of that sorted already, isn't it? And I think the, the, the opportunity here is to, to embrace the right use of automation and AI, but, but not just give over to it. Yeah, don't rely on it. Otherwise, it's like Terminator 2 style life, isn't it? It's a cyberdean <laughs> systems, you know, bomb explode. So 
in the spirit of um, you know giving AI a fair crack here, I did actually also interview Chat GPT, and I sent Nick in like a video of me asking Chat GPT to give me three positives about using AI in business and three negatives, and it did it in seconds. In fairness, yeah. so if you want a quick answer, that may be the way to go. And it, 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 it's actually not that bad. You know, it said AI can automate repetitive tasks, make processes more efficient. It can. This frees up time for employees. It then said one of the downsides is that will probably lead to job losses. Now you might think, well, I'm in business. What, what? That's not a bad thing. It is if you just get rid of people but don't re-engage them somewhere else within your business. And I think business has got a... a an obligation here not to just say well we can save time and money here so we will i think they should use that as we freed up time let's re-employ that time into doing something that a machine can't do but it's really hard i think for a lot of business owners especially at the moment all they say is rising costs and if temptation. they can save money yeah there's so much like you say temptation to replace people with robots but that's going to be so much that is lost yeah because the I think if one one of the disadvantages that was given is you know if your systems go down there's no automation there's no AI nobody knows how to do it anymore that that that's it's well done chat GPT but the other <laughs> thing they said as well is you know AI systems are only as unbiased as the data they are trained on if the data is biased obviously the outcome is biased which I think is really interesting and important here. Because if you're one of the businesses that's going to use AI to answer questions, for instance, from customers or clients, your answer is going to be a generic, bland response, isn't it? How can it be any other? And I think that's where the opportunity is here for businesses to be different. I think mm -hmm. if you can make sure that your personality, that the, your feel of your business is in your responses, surely you've got a chance to win then, haven't you? I would say so, yeah. Because that generic, that bland answer that robots or software can give, it's a bit like when you've got something wrong with yourself and you Google the symptoms. It gives you all the answers, like a 20 question style thing, but what the GP does is listens to the way you talk, watches the way you sit, look at your reactions yeah. when you press certain parts of your body. That's the stuff that Google really can't gets... go, does that hurt? Yeah. Does it hurt when you do that? It's like, well, what do you mean when I do what? Like, yeah. And it's, that's the bit. And that's why probably dentist was on here as one of the least likely to be computerized. Well, they're doing something that where no two are the same, are they? Uh, yeah. Your tooth hurts. Oh, well, we'll pull it out. Oh, no, you didn't need to pull it out. <laughs> yeah. Um, what, Nick, how, how do you think business should, should balance this then? Because... Do you, I mean, the need to save money and automate is inevitable. It feels like it's going to happen. It's how, happened. How do, it's they, happened. how do they protect against that then, do you think? I don't really know, um, to be honest. I think what we were just talking about before is repurposing the actual people that they have in their business and retraining, upskilling letting people do something that's more fulfilling for them because everybody's motivated by different things so it's a real opportunity to see what makes the people in your business tick and let them do things to help your business that also helps them and I get not every business can do that but where possible I think that's how you're going to get the best out of your people and the best out of your business and you can almost apply that same thing to your customer or client base couldn't you if you've if you've got a generic or bland product or service you're probably not going to stay in business if that's all you offer so you're going to have to find a way to adapt haven't you what well, one example i gave is my father-in-law could definitely save money if he shopped online but his first choice for most things is john lewis because he knows that there's any issues at all he just takes it back and a real person will go no worries, we'll help you out here. Yeah. What's your issue? Here's a refund. Do you want a different one? Do you want a bigger one, a little one? There's no like, it's not a computer says yes, computer says no. He, he's got that interaction and he buys based on that. So I know that he's bought things where I kind of go, well, you could have saved like 20 quid online. It's like, I know, but I want that. Do you think businesses need to kind of 
find a way to stand out then or is it as simple as that i don't know because like you said just with your father-in-law your customers are all different i'd prefer to go to amazon for example because it's more convenient for me outside of working hours it's just delivered and if it doesn't it's work click and forget isn't it it's I'm, just yeah i'm happy to either send it back if it doesn't work get a replacement on my money back yeah there's very little that i need to speak to a person about with most of my purchases that said though there are again that that works for certain products doesn't it you probably would be less likely to do that for a car or a house now and they might seem like silly examples but there, there, there are things within that where you're less likely to do it you want to try your shoe on i don't know there's different things isn't there so yeah. so how but you can say that everything's changing though because people might want to try your shoe on they don't necessarily go to the shop to try it on they just buy three different sizes <laughs> yeah which is yeah which is nuts in this waste like we're trying not to waste yeah and yet the system encourages waste doesn't it this yeah it's just the the generation or the, the society that's that's been created as a result of this i mean even within that though you touch on something quite interesting because amazon i don't think i think the scale now is part of the reason that wins because of price and things like that but they're not the cheapest either but they're not the cheapest but also they made it probably the easiest to get your refunds easiest to send things back have you ever had a deal with an actual person there as well not often but yeah you, 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 you can get them on a chatbot type thing but well, you go on the chatbot and just ask can i speak to somebody and they're like yeah and they call you within 20 seconds yeah. it's like it is pretty good man. oh yeah yeah i mean they sent, they sent me an empty box three times in a row and i thought they're never going to believe they've done it again but to be fair, <laughs> i literally got an empty box um to be fair i got a person and they went yeah we'll try again but it's going to be empty so let's do something else you were actually buying something weren't you i was trying to buy something yeah, yeah. i didn't order it i didn't order a cardboard box they, they nailed that bit i was trying to get a drill bit and i got three empty boxes um what what nick i've got another quote it was from the same thing actually so bill gates said ages ago we always overestimate the change that will occur within the next two years and underestimate the change that will happen in the next 10. don't let yourself be lulled into inaction so when you know chat gpt and this ai and all of that it's like people are like oh we'll all be out of a job tomorrow it's not going to be tomorrow but let's you know you can't ignore this can you do you think there's an argument for for businesses and employers finding a way to use these things but with still their personal touch because that's Definitely. what we get to talk about the personal touch isn't yeah. it do you uh, yeah i mean you know i mean you know we covered on our weekly catch-up last week that this you know chat gpt nearly passed the institute of chartered accountants exam which is quite a tough exam you know we've got a room for the a, a, a building for people that would tell you how hard it is i presume you just ask the question it goes out there finds all the data and it, gives you something back and it, and it only narrowly failed um but but my my point here is i've always said to people for years well you can ask google anything and it'll answer but are you asking it the right question i've said that should be a lesson in schools going forward how to google well yeah yeah, yeah. have you ever googled how to use google it's like mind-blowing <laughs> There's so many different ways you can ask the question. The punctuation makes such oh, a yeah, difference. Oh yeah, sorry. The context, the syntax. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's like wow. I've just like upped my Google game so much. Well, that's what you said though about the, the GP. The GP will notice if you like. They don't normally prefer the left hand side or the right. Yeah. Have they got a back issue as well, or is is it the neck? Is it the back? Is it the spine? Have they hurt their leg? And that you don't get that in Google. Do you? It's like my back hurts. You know why does my back hurt? You're not going to get an answer, are you? But, but a good doctor, like I think a good accountant or a good tax advisor, or a good solicitor, will they'll turn your answer back, and, like they'll turn your question back and they'll dig more and more, won't they? Well, yeah, you can sense emotions and feelings and really get to the root of the problem. Yeah. Or the root of whatever the person wants to know. Because a lot of people will say, I want to save tax. But why do they want to save tax? Uh, what, what are the plans? All of this type of stuff you need to consider. Otherwise, you get a generic answer like, <laughs> make less money. Well, I was going to say, on a literal response to, can I pay no tax? Yes, earn no money. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, there you go, you're done. Is that, is that good? Are you happy with that? Yes. I've saved you 100% of the tax you pay. I've got no money now. All right, so sorry, what was the question then? It was, 
can I get a good balance? And, yeah. and that, that's the bit that's missing, I think, isn't it? What do you think, I mean, we didn't talk about some of the other advantages here, because we've got to be careful not to just sell this as a bad thing. So, you know, again, ChatGPT reminded us that AI can analyze large amounts of data and identify patterns. We in the accountancy world have got so much data now. You get bank feeds, you've got invoices, you've got all of this data. And it is sometimes quite hard to, to see the pattern, isn't it? Yeah. Especially if you haven't learned old school before the reconciliation of transactions was done for you. So when you trained, you had to just learn how to spot these patterns, didn't you? There's a danger that next generations aren't going to have those skills. But they are going to have different skills. They'll have different skills, but only if when the date when it, when it works. If it's mm -hmm. not working, they probably can't get that shoebox full of rubbish and turn it into a set of meaningful data. Like, no, that's a skill that's gone now, isn't it? Really? Yeah. Or at least dying. That's not fair to say it's gone. Uh, it's like thatched roofs. There aren't many people who can fix, fix a thatched roof no. now, and the idea of a shoebox job will disappear in time as well. But just it? going back to your point on there, right? So, for example. Um, there's some software that we use and there's a few different variations of it but instead of processing invoices having somebody typing all that information in I think you actually did a video about three or four years ago on this a, a, a Merry Christmas video I've just given yeah. you some time back for Christmas I think it, it took was. you 20 seconds to process 20 invoices compared to like 10 Type minutes mouth, for yeah. yeah which is quite it's good no don't get us wrong you still got to check it because Anything and anyone perfect. can make mistakes, yeah. But what that's allowed is somebody to now do something different. Where you would normally yeah. have had to employ somebody new or somebody wants to learn the next part of their job, they've given them that opportunity. So yeah, it's it has got its place. Yeah. But it can probably capture much more than a person can. Yeah, yeah. Because that's one thing that always strikes me. I, you know, I've worked in this game for a long time now. And I look back at how long some jobs used to take, because they did, even pressing print on a tax return, putting it in an envelope, sending it, that all took forever. Now it's send that via the portal, it's pretty much instant. So on every job, in theory, you've saved a couple of minutes, but we don't see those minutes. It just enables businesses to find ways to offer more within the same pricing, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Well, let's look at Lego. Service. See again? Lego, have you seen the Lego factories? I they're, haven't. They're pretty, yeah, they're pretty cool, right? It's just robots and they've got set paths and they know what they've got to do by when. And they're just zooming all around this air warehouse, picking stuff up. Now, that's probably taken over jobs of hundreds of people. Yeah. But the price of Lego has not come down or anything, has it? But they've probably had to invest lots of money to be able to do that. But what they're doing is like... And they've probably got people who now fix robotic builders, you know, program them, they might, yeah, they're probably not employing any less people, just different people. Just different people? Yeah. There's like lots of it, isn't there? I saw a, I saw a video the other day of a robot cooking an omelette. <laughs> right. I mean, they're doing everything, aren't they? Which, to be fair, is one of those skills you think, well, yeah, can, have they got the dexterity? But you've got Boston Robotics or whatever it is now, you know, robots doing backflips and all kinds of, yeah, some crazy stuff. So I, don't if know, if you, I don't know where we're going with that, but... No, but, well, if you want to look 10 years ago and said, oh, have you ever seen a robot do a backflip? We're like, oh, where? Yeah. Two years ago, you'd be like, oh, no, but, yeah, they're probably going to be flying in the next two years. That's just that, what this quote is. Well, that's Bill, yeah. Yeah, yeah. you think you're going to have no job in two years, but you might not have a job in 10 years, and I think the complacent people are the ones who miss out on it. Nick, we normally, um, we normally finish any interview by saying, what's the one thing people are just keep getting wrong on this? What, 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 if you could say to businesses, what, like, this is the thing you really need to do, what would you, what would you say? Probably embrace it, but don't rely on it. Technology is obviously really important in today's society, in today's business world and personal lives. Um, but make sure you know how to fix something if it goes wrong. Know how to handle those problems that can still arise. Because ultimately it's going to come back to you. You're going to have to fix it. Yeah, especially if in most cases you're buying this technology in. You haven't created it normally, you've bought it in. You still need to know what to, happen, what, what, what to do if it fails you. Yeah. You said something really interesting as well. Is, um, Thanks. Because we, we, 
one thing, don't get carried away. We've got a small speaker in the room. And I remember just before we started, we better just press so it's not listening. And it's an Alexa. And, I th and, and, and you said something quite, quite clever for you, Nick. I was really impressed. Thanks. And you said, that's a good example. Because if we say Alexa in general conversation, it doesn't know we were talking about it rather than talking to it. And that's again, one of these simple things, you know, AI and, and, and automation. If you start the process, it will finish the process. It doesn't step back and go, so what, what did you say? Were you talking to me there? Or where was a person just does? And yeah. I, I kind of quite verbalized that, but I think that was quite a, a deep observation. It doesn't know when you're talking about it rather than to it. All it heard is its name and it started, didn't it? Mm -hmm. And that, 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 I think, summarizes it quite well. So don't be afraid of it. Use it. Just make sure you don't rely on it. Yeah, because everyone's got a everyone's got a family member who you, you know. I'll never use sat nav to do it now. <laughs> yeah. But also, everyone's got someone who they've heard the story about someone who drove into a river because the sat nav told them to. <laughs> yeah. So automation <laughs> and AI is just today's sat nav. It's today's whatever, isn't it? Yeah. Don't get it. Ah, I love it. I do love technology though. Yeah. I mean, even my car now, it's not exactly a, a nice brand new car, but it reads the road signs and tells you the speed limit and it does it with such accuracy, right? Yeah. That I don't really think I look at road signs for speed limits, at least anyway, anymore. So if my car picked that up wrong and I started doing 60 and a 30, I've got no one to blame but myself. <laughs> And there's a, before Nick admits to any other possible crimes, we'll end it there. Thank you very much, Nick. The name. Always yeah, a you're pleasure. welcome. Hope Is you enjoyed AI? that. Don't forget to comment, let us know what you think. How are you using AI and automation? Where do you think it'll never go? We'd love to hear from you.